All right, so just a few days before the election, Joe Rogan interviews Donald Trump. Hmm. And the internet is going crazy. We are going to deep dive into this Newsweek article. And it looks at it, if YouTube was trying to, like, hide this interview, oh, man, this is juicy stuff. You know, it's really interesting because Rogan already has this huge audience, and Trump chose to do this interview right before the election. Totally. And it already has 33 million views on YouTube. That's <laughs> insane. Yep. But this article says there's, like, more to the story. Apparently, the video was unlisted when it first went live. I mean, you probably know what unlisted means, but... Mm -hmm. For any of it, it means you could only watch the video if you had the link. Yeah, it wouldn't show up on, like, Rogan's channel or in searches. Right, exactly. It seems like they were trying to keep it quiet at first, which, of course, led to all this talk about censorship, <laughs> especially from Trump supporters. Yeah, a lot of people were saying that. Rogan actually went on X. You know, it used to be Twitter. And he said it was a technical problem on Spotify's end. That's what caused the delay getting it up on YouTube. And to be fair, the video is public now, which kind of seems to back up what Rogan said. Newsweek tried to get in touch with YouTube and Spotify for a comment. But we don't know if they actually responded or not. And here's another thing. Even though the interview has millions of views, it wasn't on YouTube's trending page. Yeah, that is weird. You'd think something that popular would automatically be trending. Right. So what's going on here? Was it on purpose to, like, keep the interview out of the spotlight? Or is there something else about YouTube's trending algorithm we're missing? Well... YouTube trending isn't just about how many views a video gets. They look at all kinds of things, like how much people are interacting with the video. Are they liking it, commenting on it, sharing it, stuff like that. They also want to see if it appeals to lots of different people, if it's clickbaity or not. Mm -hmm. And of course, if it follows their community guidelines. Okay, so even if the interview had a ton of views, there could be other reasons why YouTube didn't feature it. Exactly. But the article doesn't really say why. It kind of just leaves us wondering, which I think it's actually pretty clever. It definitely makes you think, was there something going on behind the scenes? Or was YouTube just being careful because it was about the election? You know, they have those rules about getting rid of misinformation. Mm. And they want to promote things from, like, trustworthy sources, especially around election time. Right. <laughs> so tough situation. It is. And it makes you realize how much power a site like YouTube has. They can basically decide what millions of people see. Yeah. And... That brings us back to Rogan. The article talks about how influential Rogan's podcast is. It's the most popular podcast on Spotify with over 14 million followers. That's more than three times the second most followed podcaster. And then there's his YouTube channel, too, with almost 18 million subscribers. So you start to see why someone like Trump, right before an election, yeah. would choose to go on his show. And yeah. It wasn't just some random interview. It was totally a strategic move. And it says a lot about how much influence Rogan has, especially over younger voters who might not be getting their news from regular places. Like he's made this whole other world of media where the rules are different. Yeah, it's interesting. And the stakes are really high. He definitely has. And people have noticed politicians, celebrities, thought leaders, they all want to be on Rogan's show. It's not hard to see why. OK, but here's where I think it gets really interesting. Back in 2022, Rogan actually said that Trump was an existential threat to democracy. But in this new interview, they seem pretty friendly. Yeah. It makes you wonder what changed. Was it just for the interview? Or has Rogan's view of Trump actually changed? And what does that mean for how people see Trump now? Especially so close to the election. It's definitely something to think about. For sure. And we haven't even talked about what they actually talked about in the interview yet. They talked about election fraud, uh -huh. aliens, even some stuff about Trump's cabinet picks. It was wild. <laughs> Lots to unpack. Ready to dive in. So let's talk about some of the things Trump actually said in this interview, because there's a lot to unpack. One of the big things that stood out to me, and it seems to a lot of other people, too, was when Trump brought up election fraud again. This is something he talks about a lot, and it always gets people riled up. Yeah, for sure. And you have to admit, it's a pretty bold move to go on Rogan's show with such a huge audience mm. and just repeat those claims just days before an election. What do you think he was trying to do there? Was it a strategy to, like, rally his base or something? Well, let's think about it. Rogan's audience is known for being pretty diverse. A lot of younger people who might not be super into politics, you know? Right. So for Trump to go on that show and repeat those claims, knowing that they've been debunked so many times, yeah. is pretty interesting. It's almost like he's trying to plant a seed of doubt, even if it's just a little one, in the minds of people who might not know all the facts. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like he's trying to go around the mainstream media. Yeah. And go straight to the people. 
And, you know, the article mentioned that YouTube has policies about removing misinformation, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to elections. But how do they even police something like this? It's not like Trump is saying don't vote. Mm -hmm. But he's definitely suggesting that the system is rigged against him. It's a tricky situation, isn't it? It is. And it raises questions about what platforms like YouTube and Spotify should do. Are they responsible for fact checking everything that's said or should they just be neutral? There's no easy answer. And it's something we're going to have to deal with more and more as these platforms get more and more influential. Yeah, totally. But getting back to the interview, yeah. there some other things that really stood out to me. Did you catch the part about aliens? Oh, yeah. That came out of nowhere. We're talking about a former president. Yeah. Hinting that he knows more about extraterrestrial life than he's saying. I know, right? He can't make this stuff up. Yeah. It was such a Trump thing to do. Vague, a little mischievous. Yeah. And guaranteed to get people talking. Yeah. Some people online took it seriously. They were saying maybe he had access to like classified UFO information when he was president. Others just thought it was Trump being Trump, you know, a master of getting attention and keeping people guessing. It's hard to know what he was really getting at, but one thing's for sure. Trump knows how to work an audience, whether it's a rally full of his supporters or a podcast studio with millions of people listening online. He does. And speaking of working an audience, let's talk about when he talked about his cabinet appointments. Remember that? Yeah. How could I forget? He did not hold back on how he felt about some of the people he picked. He called some of them disloyal, like they turned against him after they left his administration. It's really interesting to see how his presidency worked. And his style of leadership, you get the feeling that he valued loyalty above all else, which, depending on how you look at it, could be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. I see what you mean. On one hand, you want people around you who will be honest and tell you what they really think, even if it's not what you want to hear. But you also need people you can trust, people who will support you no matter what. It's hard to find that balance, especially when you're the president. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like that was something Trump struggled with when he was in office. OK, so we've talked about the YouTube controversy. We've touched on some of the main topics and we've started to analyze what it all means. But there's still more to unpack. What are your thoughts on Trump's overall strategy in doing this interview with Rogan? Well, it's definitely not the usual way to run a campaign. Most candidates, especially those running for president, like to stick to more controlled environments, like interviews with big news outlets, but, or carefully plan town hall events. Right. But Trump has never been one to follow the rules. He hasn't. So what do you make of this move? Was it smart or was it a risky gamble? I think it's a bit of both. On the one hand, he's reaching a huge audience, people who might not be paying attention to the usual political stuff. He's getting his message out there directly to the people. But on the other hand, on the other hand, he's giving up a lot of control. He's putting himself out there on a platform that's known for being unpredictable. There's no guarantee that the conversation will stay on message. And there's always a chance he'll say something that could backfire. True. And Rogan himself is kind of a mystery, isn't he? He has this massive following, but he's hard to define. He's not a journalist. He's not a politician. He's not really even a comedian anymore. So what is he and what does that mean for how people see his platform? and the influence it has. That's a great question. And honestly, I don't think anyone really knows the answer. He's kind of this hybrid figure, somewhere between entertainment news and opinion. And that makes him incredibly powerful, but also really hard to figure out. Yeah, I think you're right. He's like this wild card in I'm... the media world. And that's what makes this whole thing so interesting. You've got this unconventional candidate, mm. this unconventional platform, and this unconventional interview. And it's thrown a wrench into the whole election cycle. It's definitely shaken things up. And it's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out in the days and weeks leading up to the election. Will this interview have a lasting effect on how voters see Trump? Will it affect the outcome of the election? Only time will tell. You know, we've talked about a lot in this deep dive, the controversy with YouTube, how much power Rogan's platform has, Trump's claims about election fraud. But before we wrap up, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. It really surprised me. Oh, yeah. What is it? Remember earlier how we were talking about how Rogan called Trump an existential threat to democracy back in 2022? Well, in this interview, they actually seem to agree on something. You mean the part about climate change? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, Trump has always been skeptical about climate change. And Rogan has been talking about it more and more. But in this interview, they both kind of agreed that it's important to find different energy sources. Yeah, they did. They both said that the issue is complicated. And there aren't any easy answers. Right. It was a surprisingly nuanced conversation. I think it shows how Rogan can create a space 
where people with different opinions can actually have a real discussion. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it's easy to think of Rogan as just an entertainer, but I think he really wants to hear different perspectives and even challenge his own ideas. You don't see that a lot in media these days. No, you don't. And I think that's one of the reasons why his podcast is so popular. People want conversations that go beyond the usual talking points. They want to hear people really thinking about complicated ideas and trying to understand the world. Absolutely. So wh where does all this leave us? We've looked at the controversy, mm -hmm. the power dynamics, even the surprising moments of agreement. What's your main takeaway from this whole deep dive? I think it reminds us that we're living in a time where media is really fragmented. People are getting their information from so many different places. And those sources often have totally different agendas and ways of looking at things. It's more important than ever to think critically, to question what we see and hear and to try to understand different points of view. That's a really important point. It's something we all need to remember. As we're consuming information, we can't just passively take in whatever we're being told. Hmm. We need to be active to engage with the information, ask questions, uh -huh. and come to our own conclusions. Exactly. Well, I think that's a great place to end. We've really dug deep into this Rogan-Trump interview yeah. and explored all the different aspects of it. But the conversation doesn't have to stop here. We encourage you to keep thinking about these ideas, to engage with different perspectives, and most importantly, to form your own opinions. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll catch you next time.